begin, I want to thank you for tuning in and joining us. If you're watching for the first time, just know that you're here in God's perfect timing. Yeah. 
Stop. 
darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are the way maker. You always make a way. Wow, that was awesome. Thank you so much, Legacy Worship. How many, how many of you enjoyed today's worship? It wasn't it awesome today? Praise God. Praise God. All right, so I'm here today. We're in the actual building. This is our, our new location in South River, New Jersey. As you can see, I've, I've talked about this, but we're still under construction. And uh, I'm, I'm next to, to my left is... One of our ministers, he's also in charge of the director of the media. His name is Ugo. Ugo, can you say hi to the Hello, people? Hello, family. Praise God. You said hi already? I did. Oh, great. That okay. Was a quick one. That was quick. That was a quick hi. I'm surprised. Usually, he's usually long winded. But anyway, we're here. And uh, right now, this is uh, what we would call our generosity segment, right? right. This is the time that we, we, uh, we speak about tithes and offerings and all that. And, uh, but besides that, besides speaking about that, what we, we want to do is we want to we wanna talk real talk. We want to share with you what's really going down here at the church. Right now we're, we're smack middle in the, the demolition, I mean the construction, the remodeling. There's a lot going on. Um, we still need so much more to take place, you know. And I thank all of you who have given towards this. Your, your support and your finances have, have helped us to get to where we are now. Um, I, I really believe that there's more that, you, that, that could be done. You know, That's we right. need your support. We're not done. And we're, we're, we're in, walking in faith. How many know that we're walking in faith, right? Everything that we do is a faith walk. And we're believing God that in the next couple of days and weeks, whatever that, uh, financial need that we have, God will supply it according to his riches and glory. Amen. How many know that? God, God will Amen. supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. But the funny part about that is that he uses us here to supply it, right? You are part of this. You can help us. You can help us. You can sponsor and help us uh, support us in this in the endeavor that we have. We want to finish this as soon as possible because right now we're online and we want to we start having live services with, with the people here with us. Joining us, worshiping and, and having uh, worship and service and fellowship together. So we need your help. We're, we're, we're reaching out to you so that you can continue to help us and to bless the, the ministry. Because everything that you give the church goes straight into what we're doing. It's going right. straight into uh, the whatever things that we need for not only for the sanctuary but for the children's ministry, for the offices, for the exterior of the building and the lower level that we're working on. Uh, we want your help, your support. God has blessed you already. We know God has blessed you and uh, we want you to be part of this blessing. We want to, not only the people of Legacy Church because I know that, you know, the people of Legacy Church are givers and they've been giving towards this. Right. But this is, this is bigger than, than what they can handle and we need the body of Christ. Those who are watching this, if you're a part of the body of Christ, you can be part of this. You can help us, support us. You know, I want you to understand, listen, I'm going to let Ugo speak a little bit right now. I want you to just tell him a little bit about what Legacy plans to do here in this community and, and 
And I know that whatever we do in this community is going to affect the surrounding communities, even the state. Ugo, can you share with us? Yes. So the beauty about this place is, you know, it's one, it's our own. Yes. We're just a few weeks away from opening the doors to having worship in person. Yes, sir. In our Praise own God. place. Where our children will also have their own segment of having worship in their own place. But most importantly, we have a place, a safe place for people to come into for counseling Amen. that needs help, that needs mentorship, that needs to be encouraged, that needs encouragement. Outside of Sunday services or midweek services, we have a place that they can come to. And we will be able to meet with them, encourage them, pray with them, and also strengthen them so, so they can be, able, be a stre you know, strength to other people as well. Praise God. So this is our own place, and it's exciting. You know, a pastor talked about blessing. You are blessed to be a blessing. Yes. So your blessing, as it extends out, it's helping us fulfill the calling that God has placed on Legacy Church. Amen. Praise God. Yes. Yes. So please, don't hesitate today. Uh, you could go to LegacyChurchNJ.com and click on Donate. You could also text to give at 84321. Be part of what God is doing here. You know, your seed is going to go very far. Your support is going to go very far. And like Ugo said, he's, uh, we're, we're going to impact this community. That's right. our, our purpose of doing this is not to make any of us famous. No. Our purpose is to, get, to make Jesus Christ famous throughout this community, to, to help those that, that are in need. Uh, to bring the lost and have them come to church and worship with us and then eventually become saved and become discipled in the house of God, right? Amen. It's very important that we become disciples of, of Jesus and, and continue to grow the kingdom. That's why he called us for. That's the commission, the great commission. And you can be part of that. So don't forget, log on to uh, LegacyChurchNJ.com and click on donate. And also go to text to give. Just text to 84321. Whatever amount it is, is a blessing. We appreciate you. We thank you so much. And uh, right now we're going to go to the message. So I hope you enjoy this message. God bless you. Remain blessed. You know, Psalms 89, 15 says, Happy are those who hear the joyful call to worship. What an amazing encounter we had this morning with our loving God. Hey guys, my name is Brian. I'm the creative director here at Legacy Church. And today we're st live streaming and we just wanted to thank all of you for joining us, not only online, but in this season of new beginnings. You know, that building is just around the corner. But remember how important it is to stay connected. So follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Without further ado, here's a message from our pastor. Be blessed. Hello everyone and welcome to Legacy Church Online. Today is a very special Sunday service. Today on the stage with me is our worship team called Legacy Worship. I don't know if you guys know them, but I'm just going to give them an opportunity to say hello to you, starting with our worship pastor. Hey, um, I'm Ariel, worship pastor here at Legacy Church. Um, yeah, so, I mean, what else? You can pass yeah. it down. Okay. <laughs> I'm Jake, bass player. I'm Janisa. I'm the worship leader and assistant to the worship pastor. I'm Matthew. I'm one of the drummers. I'm a Stephanie, and I'm one of the worship leaders. I'm Elisa. I'm one of the worship leaders. What's going on? It's your boy D, a.k.a. Mr. More Than Just the Drummer. <laughs> All right. So today we have our worship band here for a specific reason. We just finished uh, recording one of our songs, our first song. It's uh, going to be premiered this upcoming Friday, which is, uh, what date is that? The 28th. May 28th. We're going to premiere it. It's going to go on Spotify. It's going to go on, on iTunes and other websites. We want you guys to support it. And today, because of that fact that we're going to be premiering this this week, uh, I decided to share a little bit about worship. You guys are interested to hear what, what I have to share today? Yeah, 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 yeah. I want you guys to relax. You guys look a little stiff there. I know, <laughs> I know you have good posture, but <laughs> today we're going to be sharing about worship. And uh, I'm going to read out of the book of John, chapter 4, verse 24. And this is Jesus speaking. And he was talking to the Samaritan woman that was at the well, at Jacob's well. And he said the following, God is spirit, 
And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's a powerful verse right there. Because I believe that we know that spirit is the Holy Spirit, correct? And truth is, who, who, who's the truth in the Bible? Who's the truth? Anybody know that? Jesus is the truth. So pretty much it's the trinity of God. And when we worship God, we worship the trinity. We worship him out of the spirit that's in us and the truth that, that, that we've heard and we received in our, in our lives. And today, you know, I, I felt that as I was preparing my message, I said, you know what? I want to have the, the, the worship leaders here because it's important. Because how many know that worship is important? Amen. Worship is critical. We talk about this all the time. Something that, that many people take for granted when they come Sunday mornings to church. They tend to walk in late to worship or they, they try to see if they could catch the message and not come in on time. But I always tell the members of the church and I always reiterate this all the time that worship is the see when when you hear the word of god it's us receiving from god god right but when we when we worship it's us giving to god it's giving our praise and worship to god so it to, to us it's very critical that that we worship god and not only at church corporately but personally right. it's very important that that you have personal worship with god i believe that you could tell a person when they're worshiping if they if they worship at home or in their personal time or not. You can see it. Sometimes they're stiff. They have their hands in their pockets. They don't get into it. But then you look at those worshipers that are totally committed to it, worshiping with their hands up, worshiping, crying, giving themselves to the God. I believe those are the people that have a personal worship at home or in their personal time. And it's important that, that we do and live that way. And I'm going to share with you about a famous worshiper in the Bible. There's a, there's a man in the Bible that is known for worship. Right? He's mentioned after Jesus the, the most, second to, to Jesus, and that is David. How many know David, right? David, of course we know David. He's a worshiper. Uh, Jesus was actually referred to the son of David, and David, I believe, totally understood what worship was. If you want to refer to someone that understood worship, was David. As a matter of fact, in the book of Matthew chapter 1, it talks about the genealogy of Jesus. And when it mentions the genealogy of Jesus, it starts off with David before it even started off with Abraham. It mentions David, and then it mentions Abraham. So it doesn't even come in uh, that order because I believe that that was done intentionally. David was a man of worship. Yeah. And because of that, that's, that's, he had the heart after God. He understood what it is to worship. He always worshiped. And I'm going to share a couple things from David. He mentions it in Psalm 150. How many know Psalm 150? That's the, that's the verse that talks about how when we worship, we worship God with all types of instruments. But there's a phrase at the end of Psalm 150 that I love, which is that let everything that has breath, what do, they, what do we do Let everything that has breath? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen to that. Yeah. So he ends the book of Psalms with, with that verse, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And I, I, just, I just love the story of David. How throughout his whole life, worship is mentioned. Uh, when, when David was, was a young boy, he would worship the Lord. The Bible talks about how worship was always part of his life. And in 1 Samuel, I love this story, this part of the story. Uh, 1 Samuel, King Saul, the Bible says that he had lost the spirit of God. It had left him. And an evil spirit came on his life. So they were discussing, because he was tormented, and they were discussing amongst his leaders... And they mentioned, you know, why don't we get someone that could play an, an, uh, a harp? And someone mentioned David, Jesse's son. Bring, uh, we heard that Jesse's son is a musician. So they end up bringing Jesse's son to the palace, which is David. And he ends up worshiping and playing the, the harp. And while he did it, the Bible says that the spirit of evil left Saul. And every time that spirit would come and torment him, he would call for David. That's a powerful story right there. And you know what? I'm just going to move uh, quickly here. At an old age, when David already was retired and he was giving the kingdom over to his son. I don't know if many of you know this, but the Bible talks about that he prepared uh, worshipers, Le Levites, for the kingdom. And as he did that, they gathered 38,000 Levites. Imagine having 38,000 worshipers in one place. Ain't that powerful? 38,000. Out of the 38,000, there were 4,000 that were musicians. So 34,000 were probably singers. And let me tell you something. 
they were, besides being worshipers, they were given high positions in the kingdom. And I, and I believe that's why King David's uh, kingdom was so powerful. Solomon's kingdom was so powerful because they understood worship. And worship was something that was powerful in the kingdom. So, you know, and I just want to share uh, a couple questions, ask a couple questions this, this morning. And I want to start off with our worship pastor, Manny. Because besides talking about this, I want personal, well, Ariel, actually, sorry. <laughs> he's a.k.a. Manny, but his name is Ariel. So I want to ask Ariel this following question. What does worship mean to you personally? Well, everyone knows the cliche, worship should be a lifestyle. <clears throat> Anything you do, you can worship God through that. But personally, I take worship as like something next level that I need this time with Jesus. Because if not, then my life is going to be messed up and screwed up. So if I don't separate a certain time of, for worship, then I'm going to have a messed up day, messed up week. Um, so to me, worship is an intimate time that I give to God. Um, maybe religiously, like every day, or it's just that time when I can say to the Lord, look what you've done, look how amazing you are, though things may happen in my life, you're there, look how beautiful you are, look how wonderful you are, um, just sneaking something in there, but um, but yeah, you know, just, just get, getting to that point where you focus on who God is, how great he is, what he's done, and just meditate on that, on that and just be in that moment with him, even if you're by yourself or with others. Um, and that, that goes along a little bit with what you said with, like, um, on, on Sundays even we see a lot of how people are just, like, still. You can see how what time they spent with God in worship. Um, you know, that personal time with worship can expand your life. And, and, and Sundays is for us to worship together. Um, so the, the time, yeah, that's, that's the best thing because God moves in a, such a bigger way because we're together and worshiping him. Not that he doesn't move on, on when you're by yourself, because like me, I'll be washing dishes and all of a sudden I'm jumping and like singing and like crying from washing dishes and worshiping. So it's like, you know, that those moments are like that are the most important. So that's worship to me. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So I have a question that's very that we could piggyback bank off that. And um, that question, let me let me look for it here. It's question number two. Because um, like you said, it's it's part of your life. It's something that, you know, you said makes you happy. Plus, washing dishes probably makes your wife happy that you wash dishes. Yeah. Right? Right? I'm not happy about washing dishes. That's but, why I put worship first. But, the, but stop. worship is first, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, You know, the question I'm going to ask you, and I'm going to explain to you as I ask it, is has anyone experienced a spiritual release while worshiping? And this is what I'm, this is the, the premise of the question. Because... For me personally, whenever I've been down and out, whenever I've gone through moments, dark moments in my life, it's been worship that has helped me come back up from the pit. It's been the times where I've been in, in my vehicle by myself, singing to God, crying out to God, because the words have power. And as I was, I would sing, I, 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 would, I would feel some type of spiritual release. And at the end of the day, I realized that that song that I was listening to, uh, meant something to me. And it actually created a, some type of like precedent or moment like in the, uh, the book of Joshua when, when something happened they would put stones in, to remember. Have you ever experienced that? That there's a specific song in your life that every time you hear you're like, wow, I remember when God did something yeah. in that time. So once again, I'm going to ask the question, has anyone experienced a spiritual release while worshiping? Can you raise your hand if you want to answer that? Let me answer real quick then. Because that just yeah. brought something in my oh, mind. Oh, okay. Uh, well, after yeah. you, I'm a pastor. We do, I'm gonna choose someone. All right. I'm gonna choose someone. <laughs> all right. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> all right, all right. No, no, um, no. Because uh, when I was younger, uh, Hillsong made this song. All I need is you. That song, I put it on repeat. I had it playing while I slept. That song changed my life with worship. Because you, before then, to me, worship songs were just like. Um, Bible verses put out and just people and when I heard all I need is you and the, the lyrics in there left my fear by the side of the road like you don't hear you didn't hear that in the Bible 
when that's like very personal, personal. And it was like, man, that's I was very fearful at the time. There was things like I needed to let go. And that song just took me to another level, maybe understand what worship was. Um, so, yeah, that's something that where I got this spiritual release was where I was bound by by anger, um, fear. And that song just let me realize all I need is Jesus all the time. And, yeah. So, let me see. Oh, uh, there's a guy. Uh, oh, D. Oh, D, okay. Oh, D, he, he volunteered. I was going to get you. I almost got you. <laughs> you got it. Okay, so I have uh, three top songs that I listen to um, every day or almost every other day. Um, the first one is Nothing Else by Cody. Um, of course, How Beautiful, that's my go-to song, um, especially when I work at night. Um, and my third song is See a Victory. The reason why I picked those three songs is um, because no matter what I'm going through, those three songs always minister. The song, Nothing Else, just the title alone, Nothing Else. Uh, God, Nothing Else Matters But You. Just to anybody that's ever heard that song, it really ministers. Um, it speaks volumes. Some, sometimes to the point, whatever I'm going through, whatever I'm experiencing, no matter what new season I'm going through in life, I pop up in that song and I just listen to the lyrics and I begin to cry every time it doesn't matter um is it ugly cry or no some well <laughs> i don't cry ugly but if you see tears coming through my eyes it's a sincere thing that means that the, the lyrics itself really ministers um then the song how beautiful um even when i first heard it coming to legacy church by pastor manny it just spoke volumes like wow because it reminds you that song alone reminds you of an intimacy that you must have with God in worship. If you do not have an intimacy with God, you cannot sing that song. I'm just I'm just being real. And with C and the song C C Victory, that's just a declaration song that no matter what you see in the natural, you're always gonna have victory because God always spoke a word in your life that you're always gonna have victory over everything. It doesn't matter what you see in the natural. A lot of us we can't worship because of what we see in the natural. But worshiping is a spiritual aspect. You have to push yourself in the physical realm to reach God in a spiritual level because those that worship him have to worship him in spirit and in truth. So if you're not in the spirit to worship, it's not true worship. You can't tap in to a place that you need physically here if you can't go there. And see a victory is just the finish line. It's just a song of a decoration to say, like, you know what, God, no matter what I'm going through, I see a victory in everything that I go through. So those are my Amen. three songs. Amen. Praise God. Powerful. You go? Okay. Um, I remember in 2013, I was um, actually battling alcoholism in my own secret place. Some of my family members knew what it was, and I was driving from Middlesex County. <clears throat> I'm not trying to get emotional. And um, Shout to the Lord was playing yes. on, on Star 99 for one. And um, I was driving home. So at this time, we lived in Perth Amboy. And there's this exit where is the, you go to Staten Island or you continue in High Street. <laughs> And um, I was listening to the words, just shout to the Lord. Um, at that moment, something broke. And wow. that moment is where I felt free. And I said, I can't stop. I can't play church anymore. Man, um, I would worship one week and out the other week. And at that time, every single time I hear that song, I even think about it, it makes me emotional because that's where my true life of worship began. Wow, praise so, God. That's That's... The one song. <laughs> wow, that's powerful. That's powerful. Just hold the mic. Powerful. We do we do gain victory in worship. It's something that that transforms us. You know, I personally believe that that worship is has transformed my personal walk with God. Uh, every everything I do is surrounds worship. You know, whenever I drive, whenever I'm home, whenever I'm working out or doing something, I'm listening to worship because it, it just encourages you. It strengthens your inner soul you know and and it does bring victory in the book of joshua chapter six there's a uh an instruction that god gives joshua we know the story about the the wall of jericho and how how the people of israel for 40 years were walking in the desert with no victory because they just continued to murmur and, and continue to to curse god for 
for sending them to the desert, ungrateful for what God really did in their lives. And there was a man named Joshua, which was a captain of the army, Moses' army, and he eventually took over for, for Moses. And God spoke to him, and the land that was promised, there was a wall. How many know that sometimes we have things that are blocking our blessing, right? There's a wall. There's something in between us and the promises of God. There's something in between us and, and what we've been dreaming for. And, and God spoke to Joshua and he said, you know, I want, first, thing, first and foremost, this is what I want you to do, Joshua. You're going to tell the people to, be, to remain quiet. We know why he did that, correct? Because when you're going through stuff, the first instinct is to complain. The first instinct is to say something negative. So we, they had learned what had happened to their for the forefathers. And they said, you know what? This new generation that took over, they said, you know what? We're going to be quiet. We're going to obey the Lord this time. Number two, he said, on the seventh day, I want you to take the priests. And I want you to play and worship. And those walls are going to come down. And the Bible tells us and shows us how on the seventh day, Joshua and the army, they went ahead, they marched that day, and the, the priests played their trumpets, and they screamed, and they shouted to God, and worshiped, and praised God, and the walls came down. Worship, praise and worship has power. Praise and worship has power. For those of you that are listening to us online, it's super critical that you understand that. That praise and worship has power. And there's power, as we can hear the testimonies as we're sharing it today. How it, it impacts us, it, it influences us. And I believe that that we need to to capture that. I didn't mention the name of the song. I'm glad you did, D. How beautiful is the name of the song that they're releasing? Manny wrote the song and, and they got together and, and we, we, we recorded it recently. And um, it's it's such a powerful title, like D said, stated. How beautiful, how beautiful is the Lord. I mean, think about everything he's done for our lives. Where would we be without him? So what greater thing can you do is to worship and praise him. And I'll tell you one thing. The Lord can't do one specific thing. And that, that is worship himself. Because there's nothing greater than him. So us as, as his creation, he created us so that we could bring him worship and worship him. So that's part of something that is part of our lives. Why we were designed is to worship and praise him. Amen. And we do receive victory when we, when we worship God or we put worship first. Uh, Jehoshaphat, in chapter in, uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, talks about this is King Jehoshaphat. There's a story. A lot of people don't know the story. But Jehoshaphat was, was, uh, was going to fight a big battle. And he's, he decided to bring the worshipers to the front line. He decided to bring the worshipers to the front line. And guess what happened? They, they received the victory that day. As those worshipers came to the front and worshiped God, they received the victory. It's in, sec in the second book of Chronicles, chapter 20. You can read that on your time. But that brings me to the one of our questions. Uh, it's number three on my list. And uh, I'm going to have, let me see. Oh, I told you. All right. Elisa's going to answer this one. Can you pass the mic over to her? Elisa, we are all called to worship. But not all of us are called to be in the front line. When did you know it was your time to be in the front line? Um, that's such a, a powerful question. And um, I would say for me, um, it was gradual, the, the, the process. Because at the beginning, kind of like anything else, you kind of doubt yourself and you're not quite sure if that's the place where you should be. But I remember God started calling me out, actually when I was in my sophomore year of high school. And... Um, it's a girl thing. I guess we get emotional. I don't know. Um, Come on, fellas. We need some tears you know here what? today. Guys, you need to cry too. Um, but I was in my sophomore year of high school, and I remember being angry with God because uh, I was so quiet and so shy. Um, but I, I, I wasn't the same when I was in the church. I was bold and loud and, and myself, right? So I would yell at God and say, why would you make me like this? Why would you whatever, right? So... One day I was sitting in choir class, and Mr. Johnson, he was all of our choir teachers. He was actually a man of God. And I'm sitting down, and I'm just sitting there, you know, whatever. He calls me out. He says, at least I come here. And there was two other students sitting by his piano. 
And he says to them, watch this. And he says, I want you to sing, I love the Lord. And I said, okay. He didn't know I knew the song, but he apparently called me out to sing the song. So I go, so he goes, all right, here's the key. Bing. He plays the key. And I start singing it. And the two students were like, wow, I didn't know you could sing. And he looks at me and he goes, you have a sweet spirit inside of you. And I was like, what the world? Like, what is this guy talking about? Right? So um, anyways, fast forward, um, I started worshiping. And it was more like singing at church. It was like, okay, you go up to sing, you go sing a song. Um, I went through a time in my life where I fell away from the Lord. Um, and um, I was in a class, yes, a class where um, I had not sung in a long time. And I was previously in the worship team. And I kind of fell away, and I didn't want anything to do with it. And the, the teacher said, um, I heard you could sing. Um, would you lead us in worship? And I felt unworthy. I felt like I couldn't worship God. How could I sing to the Lord after everything I did to him, after everything I had done? And I just felt this guilt. And so I was like, you know what? I don't like to say no, so let me just sing whatever, right? The first thing that came to my mind, I didn't think anything of it. But I felt the Lord restore something inside of me that day. Um, and it's, it makes me emotional because it's of what it meant. That moment was a, a climactic moment in my life because it started to shift and, be, and restart the process that God started already when I was in, a sophomore in, in high school. And that same day, the Lord baptized me with uh, speaking in tongue, the gift of tongues. Wow. And... It just started a change in my prayer life, in my time of worship, and it became this friendship. And that's why I say it was a process because, like Manny was saying about how worship is, worship is every day, man. If you don't, if you Amen. don't spend that time, like you're saying, Pastor, you can tell people who spend time with God and people who don't. If the moment we, as a worship leader, if you don't spend time in the Lord's presence in worship. You can sense it. You can feel it. You can see it in your worship and your sound. And it became a, a gradual friendship, growth in the Lord. And as I grew closer to him, and the more time I spent with him, the more sensitive I became to his spirit and to his voice and the prophetic word he wanted in that moment and the feel and the change in the atmosphere. Or I remember there would be moments where I'm singing and I would feel this overwhelming spirit of boldness come over me. And it's a shifting in the atmosphere. And then God would, would give, like, either myself or another worship leader words of authority to break chains in but there were also moments in where I understood the power of silence, where the Lord taught me how to be quiet and see what I do when you're still. And it co goes in hand with that, that, that uh, Bible scripture where you shared about in, in uh, Second Chronicles chapter 20, yes. where the Lord says, be still. Right? The battle's not yours, it's mine. Yes, and correct. God yes. showed up and did some crazy things. And sometimes, I guess that's why I say it's a pro it was a process for me stepping into my calling into my uh into that anointing that the lord had placed in my life as a worshiper wow that's powerful that's powerful worship brings victory restoration healing worship is powerful worship is something that that is transformative and um i love one of my favorite stories in the bible is the story of paul and silas in the book of acts luke writes about the story in the book of acts when uh, Paul and Silas were, were sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, they were, they were grinding for the kingdom, right? And there was a woman that had a spirit of divination, like a fortune teller. And uh, eventually, she got on, on Paul's nerves. I'm just paraphrasing. She gets on Paul's nerves. Paul turns around and he casts the spirit out of her. And now that was her career. And her masters got upset because now she couldn't do her fortune telling. So he decide, they decide to uh, get Paul and Silas arrested. Uh, not only that, Paul and Silas, uh, they strip them naked. They flog them. And eventually they end up in jail. But he says something when you were talking about worship. You mentioned that how when you would worship, you, you saw how chains broke off of people. And, and that's very relevant to what I'm about to talk about right now. Because we know the story in the book of Acts chapter 16. Can I get the, the Bible second? Give me a second here. 
chapter 16, verse 25, and it goes as follows. But at midnight, let me stop right there, midnight. Midnight is like a dark time at night, right? It's like a darkest, the darkest point at night. I love it when it's a dark moment in life because that's when God shows up. How many know that, right? And your darkest moment is when God will always show up. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. They were worshiping God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Let me stop right there. Another powerful thing as you worship God, as you sing to God, people around you are listening. How many know that? People, sometimes people come to church just to observe. I've heard so many testimonies of, of people going to, to a church and, and the worship was what kept them at that church. Because when they went there, they felt something different. They felt like something happened to them during the time of worship. Why? Because God abides in the midst of worship. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's what? It says freedom. Amen. And it says here, the prisoners were listening to them. Verse 26, suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prisons were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains and repeat that again everyone's chains were loose so what happens here while they're praising God while they're worshiping God there's an earthquake supernatural event takes place but it's also something that is relevant to each and every one of us because many of us like you stated before you're a prisoner to addicted to something you know sometimes we're prisoners to, to pornography we're prisoners to certain things in life and and it's worship that opened the doors for Paul and Silas but at the same time listen to this this is powerful I don't want you to miss this point the door it says all the doors were wide open when when God does something it'll, it'll affect those who are around you the fact that God transformed your life and you started taking worship serious transformation came to your life and those around you saw it salvation comes how many know that salvation comes when, when we worship God you want to hear this it says here and the keeper of the prison awakening from sleep and seeing the prison doors open supposing the prisoners had fled drew his sword and was about to kill himself but Paul called with a loud voice saying do yourself no harm for we are all here then he called for a light, ran in, and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Isn't that powerful? And he says, so, so they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved, you and your household. Worship set Paul and Silas free. Worship will set you free in any situation that you're living in. Whatever case, whatever you're living, whatever style of life that you have. Why? Because especially spirit and truth worship. When you recognize that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you, you transcend from one lo level to another. From one dimension to another. The Bible says that you are no longer dead, you're alive in Christ. And that's how you can worship God because now you're alive in Christ. And you're filled with His Spirit and you're filled with His Word. And I'm going to close this segment with one more question. And this is going to be directed to Jay, so you can pass over the mic. Because we already shared how important we personally feel worship is. And Jay, I want you to, I want you to speak to someone that, that might take worship lightly. Right? I want you to, in a few words... From all the experiences that you've had in life, because I know you have plenty of experiences. We all got through stuff anyway, right? We've all been in prison some way, somehow. We've all fall short from the glory of God, and it's really the, the things that we go in life through and, and the, the power of God and the power of worship that has restored us and helped us get through life. I want you to, in a few words, just encourage them, those who are watching today, and explain to them more or less how you feel that worship could change their life and transform them. Well, one thing um, that's one thing that stood out to me, uh, <clears throat> something that Elisa had said, when you get in a place where sometimes you feel like you're not worthy of that responsibility, of that office, um, I can think of a, one instance I was telling Pastor earlier, I'd like to 
share a story, and I'll try to be as brief as I can, just to illustrate the power of worship and what it can actually do to transform and change lives. This was going back many years ago. I had on, you know, my own band at the time, and um, we were doing an outreach <clears throat> in uh, lower Manhattan, in what area they call Alphabet City. We were on Ave Avenue D, I believe it was. And I remember when um, we were setting up, a police officer came by and he told us, hey, don't set up in front of this building. Set up over here where the grass is. And we asked him why. He said, well, because people jump out of the windows and they'll land on top of you. So it turns out the officer was a Christian as well, too. So we're out there playing, and, like, you know, you heard said you were on the front lines. There's all kinds of people out there. There's hecklers. There's people kind of threatening us, all kinds of stuff going on. So um, we would do a set. We'd have an altar call or call people up for prayer, do another set, and then do the same thing. So this one particular set, we had um, finished with the song, um, The Steadfast Love of the Lord Never Ceases. You, you guys know that know that song. Sure. And then we had the, um, told people to come up for prayer, and a young lady came forward. We prayed for her, and she's in tears and, and everything. And she told us that she came up to rededicate her life to the Lord. She was already a Christian, and she said, yeah, I live on the eighth floor of this building, eighth, tenth, whatever, you know. And she said, I was, I decided I was going to kill myself today. And I was going to jump out of the window. That's powerful. And she said, I opened the window, and I heard you guys singing that song. So I just sat and listened. And she said, I have to go down. And she gave her life back to the Lord. It was just like a breaking that took place in her life. Oh, that's powerful. And, of course, we're all in tears and everything. And me and my bandmates, we kind of, like, just looked at each other. And I was in awe. And I felt so unworthy. I'm like, God, you use me to do that? And it really hit home of just how important that office is, that ministry of, of worship and being on those front lines. Because you never know whose life you're touching. It's also a walk of faith, too. Because sometimes, and I don't know about the rest of you, I'll speak for myself, sometimes you just don't feel like you're there or where you're supposed to be and you know Sometimes you're thinking about whatever you know what went wrong during the week or you're thinking about week, that right? <laughs> Chinese food that Brian talks about <laughs> that you want to eat later on it's some something will happen but you go forward you do your job quote unquote job you minister to the Lord and you do it in faith and like Lord you take my little bit of whatever and you do what you do. And I just try to keep myself out of the way. It's like, yeah, there's a lot of bass players out there that can play circles around me, but I'm doing whatever, you know, God wants me to do. And Amen. what God does is ten times better than anything I can come up with. So wow, that's just to encourage you, just do it in faith and out of obedience. That's powerful. That's yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, because I, I, I don't know why, but I, I see, like, such a crazy similarity of that story and the story of Paul and Silas that, you know, you guys are worshiping. They were worshiping. And then all of a sudden, there was, see, the story of Paul and Silas is in the physical realm, but that, that was representing what can happen in the spiritual, spiritual realm. Yes, and amen. what happened there was in the spiritual realm. Well, all the prison doors opened. All the shackles broke in that building right where you were next to that building where you were guys were worshiping and that woman heard it and the prison doors the shackles opened up and she came down and just like the guard said how can I be saved and this is how you're saved it's just a it's like so powerful how how that's the best best part of the bible reading the bible there's a lot of things that happen in the physical realm in the bible but all of that ha happens in the spiritual realm the power of worship like especially when you come together as a congregation, come to church and worship, uh, it, it like even if it's just us worshiping and the whole church is just staring at us, there is prison doors opening up. Absolutely. There is shackles Absolutely. breaking in that moment because Absolutely. 
it can just take one person or two people like Paul and Silas to just worship and everything will open up in the spiritual realm. And that one person that's dying of cancer will come up and say, how can I be saved? And will say, Jesus yes. Christ can save you. And that's Absolutely. has happened. Uh, we had uh, uh, someone with cancer get healed. And, like, Absolutely. Uh, the stories and stories of healing and restoration. and new, It's just amazing what God is doing in, in this church and what he's going to do here in South, South River. We know we can see ahead what God is going to do. Um, and we're just thankful, but that, that, that's, I just want that to say that. That was, yeah, that, was such a, that was such a great story. It just, it just, I was like, wow, that's so similar. Like that, We just talk about that, and that's, that's the same story in, in my it mind. It was connected. But, that's the yeah. spirit of God right there. Manny, in the same spirit, do me a favor. I want you to, to, to reach out. Do an altar call right now. All right? I want you to just speak to them right now and, and just bring somebody to the kingdom with us. Come on. Okay. Um, anyone who's watching now and who feels like um, God is tugging at your heart, um, calling you, calling to you, or you feel like maybe you feel nothing, but you have a faith or an idea, or you've been crying out to God for a while, or you've been suffering of, of something that's been tugging at you. There is a Savior out there that can save you. There is someone out there that can stand up in the gap, in, in between the valley to, as a bridge for you to reach God, and His name is Jesus Christ. Yes. So I want to take this time now, if any of you watching um, want to join me in this prayer of faith, um, as calling God, as calling Jesus as your Savior, believing it, and speaking it out wherever you are, because that's all you need to do to be saved. Um, so join me in this prayer. Father God, I accept you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you were born you grew, you did miracles, you suffered, you died, and on the third day you rose again. And I proclaim this as truth, and I believe that you are my Savior, and I believe that you break any curse that may have been part of my life or in my family's life. And I believe that worship will be the forefront from now on in my life, that every shackle that every door will be opened that no one else but you can open. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. If you did that prayer, the Bible says that you are born again. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. All the past things that you have done have been wiped away, and behold, you are new. God bless you. Listen, we want you to write to us. If you receive Jesus, write to us, DM us. We want to send you a Bible. We want to send you a gift. And pretty much we're done today here. Guys, I appreciate Legacy Worship. I appreciate each and every one of you, your love, your dedication, your passion. We already heard what worship is and what it does and how it affects us. And that's why I'm so happy and I'm so honored that, that this song is, is, is going to premiere this coming Friday. It's, it's going to be a blessing because there's so many people that, that are in need of God. There's so many people that need to hear, to be touched. Look, shout to the Lord. Boom. An amazing song. What's the other song you mentioned? That all I need is you. Another song. So these songs, they 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 set a, like a landmark in your life, right? And I, and we're gonna believe God that that how beautiful is gonna be in that same realm, and it's gonna go out there. It's gonna touch people's lives. People are gonna recognize Jesus as the Lord and Savior, and they're gonna recognize that He is beautiful, and that He is good, and He's loving, and He's an awesome God. So please, don't forget. You got to go on iTunes, download it, uh, go to Spotify. Where else are we going to have it? Do you know? There's going to be, well, it's going to be in our website. It's going to be everywhere. We want you to, besides downloading it or searching it and, and putting it on your favorites, yes, favorites with a little heart, we want you to share, share, share. Share it to everybody. Put it out there. Put it on your, your, your gram, on Facebook, everywhere that, that you can. Share it because it's going to be, it's going to be victorious. People are going to be transformed. People are going to be touched. It's going to bless those that are listening to it. It's going to bless us as well. Yeah. Thank you for joining uh, us today and tuning in. We love you. God bless you. And see you next time. What an amazing message from our pastor. I know you were all blessed because our God is just that good. Remember to stay connected via Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. We love you all, and we'll see you right here at the same time next week.